right, let's take a closer look at this idea of potential energy. Potential energy is stored energy. Energy can be stored in a system by doing work on that system. So you do some work on the system to put energy into it, and it's stored. You have a look at this archer here, for example. He's done work to pull back the string of that bow. Well, that work that he's put into that bow is now represented as potential energy. All he's got to do is let go of that string, and then, of course, that potential energy will be released to make that arrow move. Uh, here's another example. We have skiers riding in a, in a, in a chairlift. They're up very, very high here. Uh, if that cable broke, a tremendous amount of energy would be released, and I doubt if these people would survive it. Here's a more fun example of potential energy. Uh, this is a trebuchet, which was used in ancient times to, uh, to do sieges on castles. It, too, uses stored potential energy. What, what it has is a very, very large counterweight here, very, very massive. And uh, by pulling the, the rock down, so these guys are going to pull it down here, and then by letting it go, uh, we store a lot of energy inside this system, and that counterweight will then hurl that rock towards the castle. So let's talk specifically about gravitational potential energy, which is to say the potential energy that we have when objects are in a gravitational field. So first off, objects that have mass in Earth's gravity have weight. Let's clarify these terms. Mass and weight do not mean the same thing. Mass, which we represent by the small letter m, is the amount of matter in an object. How many atoms and molecules do you have in that object? That never changes, no matter where you are, whether you're on Earth or in outer space and you're weightless, you're never going to be massless. Mass is a scalar. It has no particular direction. It is measured in kilograms. You're quite familiar with that. Now, many times we've called this weight, but it's not. It only has, mass only has weight when it's in a gravity field, which is what happens all the time on Earth. Weight, represented by the capital letter W, is a force. It's the force of gravitational attraction that uh, Earth has on a mass. It is a vector. It has a definite direction, so all weights are heading down towards the center of the Earth. It is measured in units called Newtons, symbolized by a capital letter N. Objects in Earth's gravity accelerate at a rate of 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, you might have noticed that is an acceleration. So meters per second squared is how things accelerate on Earth. It's, it's almost 10 meters per second squared. So here we have a person on Earth standing on a scale. This would be their weight. In this particular case, it's uh, 784 newtons. If we want to get their mass, we do something totally different over here. We would put them on a balance, and we would see that this person balances perfectly against 80 kilograms. So we would say, this person has a mass of 80 kilograms, because that's nicely balanced on this, on this balance beam here. This person has a weight of 784 newtons. How would you get that? Pretty easy. If you just take those 80 kilograms and multiply them by the acceleration on Earth, 9.81 meters per second squared, what you're going to get is 784 newtons. So if weight is a force, then what is the gravitational potential energy? How can you calculate how much gravitational potential energy a weight would have? Well, it's, it's based upon the idea that you've had before, that gravitational potential energy is equal to the work done to lift an object through a vertical distance. In other words, EP for gravity, or potential energy of gravity, is the same thing as work. Well, we also said that uh, EP is the same as a force times a distance. We've been there before. Now, let's have a careful look at this. Uh, we know that a joule is a newton multiplied by a meter. And we know that a newton breaks down into a kilogram times a meter per second squared. So if we put this all together and separate the force into its mass and acceleration here, or mass times gravity, and then if we take the distance and call it height, we get gravitational potential energy, which is represented by a capital E with a little p, um, is, can be calculated by taking the mass of the object multiplied by its gravity. We just did that on the previous page, so there's your weight. And then add one more uh, calculation, multiply it by the height. And if you do, you're going to get a kilogram times a meter per second squared times another meter. That all put together is a joule. So that m times g times h is a joule. 
and energy is measured in joules. So we're okay. All of our measurements are corresponding to the things that they belong to. I guess the best way to see this thing in action is to do a few of these things. Uh, a child has a mass of 25.0 uh, kilograms at the top of a slide in a playground. If the vertical height of the slide is 4.0 meters, calculate the gravitational potential energy of the child relative to the ground. Well, that's not too hard to do. We know that gravitational potential energy is mass times gravity times height. Uh, we were told, uh, we have the information at our fingertips here, uh, the weight, the mass of the child, we know that g on Earth is 9.81, so we can just basically go ahead and say, let's put in our numbers. The mass of the child is 25.0 kilograms. The uh, gravitational pull on Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the height that this kid is above the ground is 4.0 meters. All right, then if that's the case, we're ready to do our math. We get out the calculator and we say, what is 25 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by 4? And we get an answer of 981. So we can basically say that the gravitational potential energy of this situation is 981. And now we have What's our units? We have a kilogram times a meter per second squared times another meter. That's going to be joules. So please remember, your answer is not simply a number from your calculator. It is a measurement of something. Now we have an 800 gram bird that has 47.0 joules of gravitational potential energy when it's perched high up in a tree. Calculate the bird's vertical height from the ground. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra on this one. The original equation is potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times height. But our problem is, is we, we've been given the potential energy. We want to figure out what is the height? How do I calculate height? Well, let me back up a little bit by what if I pose you a, a, a simpler problem? If I said to you that 24 is equal to these three numbers, 2 times 3 times 4. I hope you would agree because 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 times 4 is 24. If I then took this last number, the 4, and said how would you get that 4 with the numbers that remain behind? And you might say, well, take the 24 and divide it by 2 times 3 because 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 goes into 24 four times. Now be very, very careful here when you do this on your calculator because if you do this wrong, watch what happens. If I take, if I take my 24 here, if I take my 24 and I divide it by 2, I get 12. And then if I take 12 and times it by 3, I'd get 36. Well, that's insane. There's no way that 24 divided by 2 times 3 is 36. It's 4. The problem here is the person needed to put brackets around these uh, calculations down here and get them done by themselves rather than being done one after the other. Uh, so if we apply that same strategy to this equation, we can say we can get you the height by taking the potential energy and divide it by essentially what's left, the mass times the gravity. Well, let's do that over here. So the height is going to be equal to our 47.0 joules. And always include your measurements. Don't just write down the numbers. This is going to cause you problems. And we're going to multiply that by the mass. Now, we do have another problem here. The basic units for doing all these calculations are uh, meters, seconds, and kilograms. And they were being a bit tricky with us by giving us 800 grams. Well, what we need is kilograms. No problemo. We can make grams into kilograms just by simply moving that decimal point three places. We've got 0 0.8 kilograms. Now we're talking. And lastly, we're going to multiply that by gravity on Earth, which is the good old 9.81 meters per second squared. I'll extend that line a little bit here. So now, oh, close the brackets. So now we're actually ready to put that into the calculator. Because if you've got a calculator like this one, a TI-83, you can do brackets. So we have 47 divided by, now here come the brackets, the 0 0.8 multiplied by 9.81. Don't forget to close those brackets off, then press your enter key. And we get an answer. And the answer we came up with was 5.9, and it was 8, 8, yada, yada, yada. And what is that? 
Well, if we have a joule being divided by a kilogram times a meter per second squared, uh, everybody sort of cancels out. And the only thing you're going to have left over is uh, meters. That's how high this thing is above the ground. But if you go back to your data, you'll recall that uh, we've only got two significant digits here in this 47.0 grams. So we're going to have to uh, cut down our answer to two. So I would suggest we round that off to 6.0 meters. The bird is 6.0 meters uh, uh, off the ground. A hanging sign is 3.0 meters above the ground. It has 1.47 times 10 to the third joules of gravitational potential energy. Calculate the mass of the sign. Now, our initial equation says potential energy is mass times gravity times height. And what they want us to calculate is the mass. Mass equals equals what? Well, once again, I'm going to give you another concrete example. Let's go back to my previous example where I said 24 is equal to 2 times 3 times 4. Only this time, I'm trying to figure out what, what the 2 is worth. So if you hopefully look at the green equation, you would say, oh, well, I can get that easy. Uh, just take 24 and divide it by 3 times 4. Because 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 goes into 24 two times. But don't forget, put those brackets around that, that bottom calculation. If we apply that to the red equation, we would say, all right, we can get the mass by taking the potential energy and dividing it by what's left over, the gravity times the height. So let's do that. Uh, the mass is going to be the potential energy, which is 1.47 times 10 to the third power joules, divided by Earth's gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. And you'll, you're not going to see that given on a list, because that's just something the, the kid in grade 10 is expected to memorize. Uh, multiplied by the height, we are 3.0 meters above the ground, and don't forget your brackets. All right, so having got our math sorted out, we're now ready to go to work with our calculator. Uh, entering a scientific number, 1.47, hit your second function key and your exponentiation key, and then put in your power, which is 3. So there's 1.47 times 10 to the third joules. Divide that by, and don't forget these brackets, 9.81 multiplied by 3 meters, close your brackets, press the enter, and there's our answer. So our answer came out to be something like 49.99 blah 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 blah, right? I mean it, it goes on and on and on. If we have a joule divided by meters per second squared multiplied by meters, the only guy who gets left over is a, is a kilogram. And so we're going to have the mass of our sign here. But if we go back to our original data, um, I can see I've got a problem here. I've only got two significant digits over here. So I'm going to have to round this thing off to two. And I'll have to say, look, uh, that's, that's basically, that's 50 kilograms is what we've got going on here. And so there's examples of uh, different ways in which this same equation can be twisted around and played with. And we're going to give you plenty more practice of that in class.